Put your hands together. Let's thank God for our children. Amen. They're celebrating the Passover. They look beautiful on today. Amen. He is wonderful. How many know that he is?
Bless the Lord, everybody, all over the building. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Father, we thank you today. God, we thank you. God, we praise you for another Sabbath day. This blessed Passover, you allowed us to come before your presence. God, we bind the enemy. Your blood prevails. Your blood prevails. We bind sickness. We bind disease. Every issue our body, your blood, send your healing, send your deliverance in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Touch all over the world. Touch right there in their living room, in their bedroom, in their oh, yeah, you're the asunder. Oh, God, right in the kitchen. God, we thank you and we praise you. God, we love you. We know you had that, if it had not been for the shedding of the blood, there be no remission for our sins. God, we thank you for dying on the cross. In Jesus' name, bless us as we come before you with the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord today. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Is everybody happy today? Is everybody happy? I know it reaches Oh, to the high, highest mountain I know it flows to the low The lowest valley That gives me strength from day to day, from day to day. Oh, it will never. Anybody know about the blood? Never, never lose his power. Oh, I know. Hospital bedroom to the highest mountain. Woo! I know it flows, it flows, it flows to the lowest of the lowest. I don't matter how where you are, it'll flow to the lowest valley. Woo! I know the blood. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
anybody know about the blood? Is there anybody that know about the blood that reaches to the highest mountain, flows to the lowest valley? Woo. God bless you. God bless you. We are grateful unto the Lord, giving praises to God. Honor to all of you who are here. Thank God for all of our pastors. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Pastor Ridley, all the way from Florida. Come on, put your hands together. Pastor Burton, all the way from 63rd Street. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Elder Burton, all the way from 93rd, somewhere over there. Come on, bless the name of the Lord for our elders. Pastor Glover, all of our ministers, evangelists, teachers, and preachers. Amen. Get the little boy. Amen. Have him sit down, please. We're grateful unto the Lord. Truly, God is good. And we thank God for all that God is doing in this church. Amen. Put your hands. Just give the Lord praise. Thank God for my beautiful wife, Rhonda. First Lady Ridley, God bless you. We are grateful unto the Lord. I do praise God. I'm going to be very brief, hopefully, today as, as the Lord lead us. And I just thank God for all of you. I just enjoy the children. Did you enjoy the babies? Hallelujah. And our young adults. Evangelist Ridley over there. God bless you. Jamani, we praise the Lord for you. God bless you. Pastor Diane, all the way down in Iowa, we love you. We're praying for you. God bless you. I know she watches every week. And I just want to bless her and thank God for all of you who came out to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I know you all are ready for the feast, but let's get ready for the word. Amen. Somebody say, eat the whole roll. Amen. Because I know we're going to sit down and eat and enjoy ourselves. But I want you to just for a moment, just for a moment. Amen. Those of you who are watching, we want to praise God for the life of our own sister. Come on, somebody, put your hands together for her. Amen. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. We praise the name of the Lord for you today. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles very quickly. I want to bring a word today very quickly, and the Lord say the same. Go to the book of Galatians, second chapter, book of Galatians. Amen. Amen. I want to read the 20th verse. Galatians 2, Galatians 2 and 20. I, when you have it, say amen. amen. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is a scripture, a verse. As I was reading it, it sounds like a phenomenal song that I'm reminded of. <laughs> but I was thinking as I was reading this this week, I am crucified with Christ. It brought my mind to the crucifixion. The crucifixion, parts of the crucifixion, it tells us that flogging or scourging was done before every crucifixion. The scourging was intended to bring a victim to a state just short of death. The whip 
had iron balls tied a few inches from the end of each leather thong in the, the thong on the whip, sometimes sharp sheep bones would be tied near the ends. The iron balls would cause deep bruising while the leather thongs would cut into the skin. The sheep bones would hasten the process by cutting into the skin. After a few lashes, the skin would be cut through and the muscles would begin to be cut. Blood loss was considerable and the pain likely put the victim or put Jesus in a state of shock. Yes, After the flogging, Jesus had to carry his own crossbar. Yes. And I was looking at that cross when they brought it in. And I thought about this message. From the flogging area inside the city of the crucifixion area outside of the city walls, he had to carry it all the way. The crucifixion area was always outside of the city because the process was horrible and disturbing to citizens. The part that Jesus carried was the crossbar weighing in at 75 to 125 pounds. The crossbar would be balanced in the shoulders. His arms were tied to the crossbar. In this position, he tripped or failed he could not use his arms to break the fall. He would likely fall on his face first into the ground. Once the crucifixion area was reached, he was offered a drink of wine mixed with myrrh to act as a mild painkiller. This drink was a charitable service performed by an association of women in Jerusalem. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus' final hours on the cross lasted from approximately 9 a.m. to 6, 3 p.m., a period about six hours. The chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him. Now, if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. Amen. In Romans 8 and 13, it tells us, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Somebody say, I am crucified with Christ. The old man is dead. Christ lives in me. Is it true? Is the old man dead or do you still have some of him or her still around? 1 Corinthians 11 and 28 said, but let a man do what? Examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own selves. How does that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. We ask the question today, are you crucified with Christ? When you begin to examine yourself and look in your life, in every aspect of your life, you either ask yourself, am I crucified with Christ? Is everything in me, the old man, the old spirit, the old ways, the old powers, the old way of thinking, the way I used to walk, the way I've been walking. See, the old man has not yet died in us. We have still some old ways and some old attitude. Jesus done died on the cross, but we still praising him and all of that, but there's still some stuff in us that needs to die. There's some things in our lives that need to be crucified. Realize how rough it was, how tough the crucifixion was for Jesus. Why was me? What must we still continue to crucify him on the cross? 
He's already died and he's already been buried and then he rose again. But somebody is still crucifying Christ. The death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ are the critical elements of our salvation. Nothing but faith in the person and work of Jesus is sufficient to reconcile us back to God. One of the things we must realize is that we have to be crucified with him. We have to be crucified with Christ. We can celebrate, we can jump and shout and dance, but there's still some stuff in us that need to be crucified. There's still some things in our lives that need to die. Y'all know, I know somebody say, here he comes again, but everything in you has to come out. Every spirit in you, every way, every attitude. The Bible tells me that when a man's ways please God, he make even his enemies to be at peace with him. You've got to understand that the Lord is all right to celebrate, but I have come to the conclusion that we still have to die. When a man dies, shall he live again? Job asked the question, yes. Somebody said, I shall live. Somebody said, in the, in the resurrection, but I'm going to live today. I shall live and not die. I am grateful unto the Lord because the enemy desires to keep hold on some parts of our lives. We can come to church. We can praise God. We can remember the Passover. But we've got to kill the old spirits. Everything, every way, every, every attitude, you want God to live in you. You want God's blessing to be in your life. You want God's deliverance to be in your spirit. You're going to have to kill everything that's not like God. Everything, every way, and every action. You can't just play with this thing. You can't just say it is dead, but then every now and then, you know how the devil, when you know the devil is there, every now and then he rises and he raises his ugly head. Every time you think you're getting ready to do something and go somewhere, straightway comes that spirit in you. What did, what did Paul say in Romans? I, when I would do good, evil is always and ever present in my life. You don't realize that all the evil, the stuff is in you until you, sometime, until you open your mouth. Once you leave the house of the Lord, you ain't even got to wait to leave the house of the Lord. I'm not going to get any help up in here today. You don't even have to leave the house of the Lord before the devil start rising up. Somebody could tell you, don't touch her, don't do this. And you look, well, I got to not do that. Come on, tell that devil, crucify, crucify, crucify everything in me. Somebody tell you to do something to stand somewhere in the church. You stop grumbling and complaining. Sounding like the children. Of, can I preach today? I'm not going to be long. Hallelujah. But the devil got to be crucified from the pulpit to the dough. Don't they say that? Don't you know that the devil is a real in your life? Come on, you have to learn how to plead the blood of Jesus. I need somebody that know how to pray and say, Jesus, take out everything in me that's not like, come on, because here God, G can you imagine him hanging on the cross for you? Yeah. Dying on the cross for you, for your sins and everything that you had done. And he's dying for you, and you still crucifying Christ. Oh, God. Every time you get ready to do something wrong, you ought to think about him dying on the cross, having to carry his cross, 75 to 125, carrying his own cross, then putting on the cross, and then the nailing in his hands, and the nailing in his feet. Come on, the piercing in his side, the, thrown, the thorns around his head. You still don't appreciate all that he has done, all that he has done for us, how he died on the cross for me. God, every time I think about it, I say, Lord, say, forgive me. God, deliver me. God, you died on the cross for my sins. Jesus died for me. I need God to crucify everything in me that's not like him. Come on, how many want to be crucified? Everything that's in you that's not like him. Now, some, some of us got some stuff crucified. Come on, if you got some stuff crucified, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Come on, that had to die in me. That ap ap added appetite had to die in me. 
that appetite for chicken all day long. Come on, I'm not going to get no help. But sometimes you got some stuff in you you don't even realize that's inside of you that has to be killed. The only way you're going to get better, come on, the only way you're going to get better, the only way you're going to live and enjoy God is for you to have it crucified. Crucify those spirits and demons. Somebody say, I ain't got nothing in me. I'm good. I'm good today. You got something in you when you just said, I'm good. I'm good. If you said, I'm good, you got something in you that needs to be taken out. You got a lying spirit in you. <laughs> Someone help me, Jesus. Because one of the things that I want, I want to see Jesus. How many want to go back to see him when he comes back? It don't matter about all of the stuff that I have accumulated and cal calculated, all the education, all the jobs that I didn't work at, all the money I'm going to get when I retire. Some of us ain't going to get to retirement. Some of us not going to even get to that place because God's not going to give you that long life. Come on. What has happened this week ought to wake you up. Somebody ought to say, you know what? We got a whole lot of plans. Some of us got plans right now that we want God to do for us. We got things that we are planning in our minds. Some of us got vacations. We got trips that you're not going to even be able to go on. You got houses you're about to buy that you're not going to even be able to live in. You got cars that you're thinking about, Mercedes. You're thinking about Lexus and all the rest of that. You're not going to even be able to drive because you're not crucified. Somebody say, it's got to die. I want God to crucify everything. I am crucified with Christ. Somebody say, no longer I, but Christ. That live. Don't you know Christ and the devil can't live in the same house? Just like some men and some women can't live in the same house. Some folks live upstairs and some live in the bay. I'm not going to get no help up in here. Come on, help me, Jesus. But the enemy wants you to continue in your ways, continue in your actions, and continue in your behaviors. Continue, even though you love the Lord, you love Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. He carried that cross for you. He died and he was buried for you. And say, Lord, I thank you for death. I thank you for your suffering. But some attitudes that we have has to be crucified. Some ways, and I can see and I can tell, and I pray for us because of the fact that some of the things that's in us have not yet been crucified. And I know, I know we preach deliverance in this church all the time. And somebody say, when am I ever going to get right? When you get right, come on, help me now. I can't make you get right. I can't help you to get right except you accept the word of God. And I'm tired. I tell the devil, I say, I'm tired of you messing with me. I'm tired of you making a fool out of me. Y'all want to go home? Tell Alvin to wake up. Come on. I'm tired of the devil making a fool out of me. Come on, because the devil is making a fool out of you. The devil is making you say stuff that you shouldn't be saying. The devil is making you act certain ways you shouldn't be acting. The devil is making you go places you have no business going. Do you know why he got you going there? Because you're not crucified. Those things have not been crucified. You're still mad with your ex-husband. Still mad with your stepchildren. I'm not going to get no help up in here. But somebody say, Lord... Crucify everything that's in me that's not like Christ because the devil and Christ can't live in the same body. You can't eat of the Lord's table and the table of devils. I feel like preaching now. I said, Lord, take out of me everything that's not like you. Do I have any help up in here? Somebody say, take it out, Lord. Crucify everything. Come on, lift your voice and say, Lord. I'll be through in a minute if you say, Lord. Woo! Come on, the Lord told me to let the dead bury the dead. And the Lord told me to preach the kingdom of heaven. Preach the kingdom of God. Somebody say, Lord. Oh, Lord, everything, everything is in me. There's not like you. 
those of you that's watching, lift your hands up and say, Lord, I want to be crucified with Christ. I'm tired. Anybody in here tired? Anybody in here frustrated with the enemy? And you can't take the devil no longer. Tell that devil you've got to go. You've got to go. You've got to go. Get out of me. I'm coming to church week after week, and still the enemy is in me. I'm coming to church year after year, and the devil still get me upset. I'm jealous. I'm angry. I'm bad. Somebody say crucify every spirit in me. Come on, let me hear you say crucify. Come on, lift your voice and say crucify. Every crucify. Say it again. Say crucify. Every spirit, every demon, every power that's not like you. Crucify. Lord, save me. Save my spirit. Save my mind. Save my thoughts. Help me. Some of us don't want to get delivered. But somebody say, Jesus, I thank you for dying. I thank you for going to the cross. I want you to live in me. Because he said, I stand at the door knocking. All you got to do is open. Come on now. Open up your heart and let the Lord come in. Who want the Lord today? Who want the Lord today? Who want the Lord today? Say crucify. Crucify. I've got to die. That old man, the old spirits, the old powers, the old demons, the old devils. Got to die. Somebody say ain't no devils in me. I don't care about none of y'all. If the devil is there, lift my voice and say, devil, you've got to go. Satan, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, I'm crucifying daily, bringing myself into subjection unto the will of God. How many want to be in subjection in your spirit? In your mind, in your body, your body will be healed. Your mind will be delivered. Say yes. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in your God. Somebody say, crucify me. Crucify. Crucify. Sometimes you got to scream it. You got to tell the devil you're serious. The devil's not, he, he ain't, he ain't, he don't, don't just see your white clothes and your red and your white and think he can, oh, I better leave her alone. He gonna mess with you more than he mess with anybody. And you know, I said, I told you, Junior, I said, one time I thought about it. I never used to wear no collar. and never go out nowhere wearing no collar. Straight away come the enemy. How many know the devil comes? But watch this. Hold to the Lord's unchanging hand. And don't be afraid of the devil. You've got to say, Lord, give me some power. When the enemy comes, the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit will give you power. Somebody say, I don't want nobody to know. I don't want nobody to know that I'm saved, that I'm sanctified. I went to the store yesterday, and I said, I need a white suit. The lady started looking at me and talking to me. She said, because normally I have a big, big guy who helps me. She said, she said, you going to preach somewhere tomorrow? I thought about that thing. I said, how do you know that? She said, you look like a preacher. Come on, somebody, and say, yeah. yeah. She said, you look like a preacher. She said, we have some coming in here. They be shortchanging. They be acting like they say and trying to pick me up. But somebody say, I'm saved. 
I've been crucified. That spirit of lust that I used to have, somebody say it's been crucified. That spirit of lust has been crucified. That spirit of alcohol has been crucified. That spirit of drugs has been crucified. That spirit of lying has been crucified. That spirit of fornication has been crucified. Lift your hands and say crucified. She said there'd be some jack leg, jack leg preachers coming in here looking like they're a preacher. You got to figure out if they're a preacher. But the first thing she said, you're going somewhere to preach tomorrow. I said, how you know that? But somebody said, because Christ, when you see me, I'm not going to get no help. When they see you, they ought to see Jesus down on the inside. Why are they going to see him? Somebody say they see him because I've been crucified. Why do they see him? Lift your hands and say, I've been crucified. Some people got to wear a bike, have to carry a Bible, carry a sign, and then get a speaking. I didn't have to speak in tongues. I didn't have no Bible. I just came from work. And y'all know how we look coming from work. Come on now. She said, you a preacher? I said, yes. Somebody lift your hand and say, yes. I'm proud to be a part. Come on, lift your voice if you are. Somebody say, I'm proud. I'm happy to be a part of the royal kingdom. I'm a royal of the royal priesthood. Somebody say, we're priests, priests, priests. I've been crucified. Lift your voice and say, Lord, crucify. Come on, come on. Crucify. Crucify. Say it. Crucify. My mind. Crucify. My spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Woo. Woo. Come to church on the weekend. Go to church on Saturday. Go to church on Sunday. Still not crucified. Still not saved. Still smoking and drinking. Still fornicating and lying. Still got love spirit. Got demons. And lift your voice. How many want to be crucified? Say it. Come on, say crucify me. Woo! Crucify. That attitude. Crucify. Play it, boy. Crucify. Come on, point to yourself and say crucify. Woo! Crucify me. Kill me. Crucify everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crucify every time, every enemy, every lying, every hormone, every fornication, every adultery. Crucify. Come on. Me, 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 me. Say it. Yeah, yeah. You're not dead yet. That spirit's not dead. That thing is not dead. Cause they are alive. I'm going to be praying today because we're going to be in the kitchen, in the diner. Some folks going to get their place. And I'm going to see some spirits that's still alive. How come my plate is smaller than her plate? Y'all got y'all picks and choosers up in here. Stick your behind out and all that. Because I know when it starts doing this, some stuff ain't dead yet. 
Come on, everybody going to eat. Come on, somebody. And some of us need to stop eating. I'm not going to get no help up in here. <laughs> somebody say crucified. Folks can't work in the kitchen together. So you know, I told y'all the other week, don't put everybody together, Sheila. Rhonda. You know we don't work together good. You know better than that. It shouldn't be nobody in here you can't work with when you're crucified. You know, we just got different styles. Come on, let your style and her style merge when you're crucified, when you're fasting, when you pray. Come on, you weak, you're humble, your spirit is meek, you're crucified. You say, yeah. You be looking at it and say, what do you think? What do you think? And I heard Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. Say, yes. Oh, crucified. We want to be crucified, don't we? Don't we want to be the little hut? Woo! That's why I stay in my office sometimes. Don't bring me no craziness up in here. They knock on the door. Pastor, I think you need to be out here. It shouldn't be nothing. Let me say that again. It shouldn't be nothing going on out here that the pastor need to go out there and handle. I done preached. I done prayed for Somebody say, I'm crucified. I got my stuff together. I got my body together. You got some people in the church you hate to see coming. You already know they're going to be trouble. You're like, oh, Jesus. Somebody said, we're going to pray on her today. We're going to pray. First of all, don't just pray on her. Pray on you. She ain't the problem. You the problem. Because she might be a problem, but don't let her problem be your problem. The enemy wants you to be like that for the rest of your life. Yes, we know some saints who died on the being gone on, and we was afraid of them. Don't get too close to her. Come on now. But you got to tell the Lord, say, Lord, I want everything. See, see let me tell you something, what happens to the devil, the way the devil works in us. The older you get, Watch this. I'm not talking about old folks. But the older some of us get, we become bitter. We get angry. We feel like everybody owe us some. That ain't God. That ain't the Holy Ghost. But you know, what, what, what do you always hear? What do we used to hear all the time? Keep on living. You're going to be just like me. Keep on living. I said, Lord, if I get like that when I get old, take me away from here quickly. Well, you know, and see, stop justifying it in your age. Stop, whoa, watch this. Stop justifying your ways and your attitude because of the month, the time of the month. I'm not going to get no help up in here. I know I wasn't. Come on, somebody. I don't like to touch that area too much, but y'all know what I'm talking about. You just don't know. You a man. You better pray on that thing. How many know how to say the blood of Jesus? Woo! Just don't want to be around nobody. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. What I said the other day, I ain't had my coffee yet. Got off the wrong side of the bed. Somebody say crucify. Crucify. 
You know, you know you can't live without that cup of coffee. You better say, I can't live without Jesus. Come on now. Because one day they ain't going to be able to find you no coffee that you want. But you better have Jesus. Somebody lift your voice and say, crucify me. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put them together. Don't be blaming old age. Don't be blaming old age. You was headed that way before you got old. Now you feel privileged. You owe me nine months. Somebody keeps saying to you, nine months. You know, and you was not easy, girl. You was not easy. Tell that devil you're a liar. Come on, I want to be sweet in my old age. How many want to be sweet in your old age? How many want to be kind in your old age? Some of us, people want to want to be around you in your old age. Come on, somebody, say crucify. Say it, come on, we close and we close. Say crucify. Come on, say it. stand on your feet and say it like you mean it. Say crucify. Come on. Stop blaming what you're going through. And say crucify me. Crucify me. Nobody got to know what's going on in your life. What time of the month. Nobody got to know any issue. But somebody say crucify every spirit, demon, power that's overtaken me. Crucify Crucify! Woo! How many want to be dead? How many want to be buried? That thing they had to be buried. Your ex-husband issue. Your ex-wife. Come on, somebody say, I'm not, I don't want to be mad. I don't want to be angry. Woo! Play it, boy. Come on, lift your hands if you want to deliver. want to be crucified lift both those hands lift them up I want you to hold those hands up and think about Jesus on the cross what he did for you how he died for you how he bled how he suffered for you lift those hands I am crucified Lift those hands.
the son of God who loves me and gave himself for me when nothing else could help your love lifts in me you gave your only son your love that for me is unconditional you love me so grateful that you love me come on help me i'm so glad you love me so grateful that you love me Woo! i'm so i'm so glad you love me so grateful that you love me yeah how many grateful I'm so glad you love me. Woo! So grateful that you love me. One more time with nothing else. When nothing, your love, your love lives in. You gave your own. Yes, you did. It's unconditional. How many glad Jesus loved you?